Will the history of astronomy be divided between before Webb and after Webb? Yes, I believe it will be. So something real is happening, but we can't tell yet if it's a mistake in our observations, a mistake in our interpretation, or just something nature is surprising us with, such as a new kind of dark matter, a new kind of dark energy, or something else that would be really exciting to, to discover. So if there's a Nobel Prize in here, that could be one of them. What was meant to be our new window into the universe has instead become a spotlight exposing cracks in long-trusted cosmological models. Even the basic question of when the earliest clusters of stars gathered into the structures that eventually became today's galaxies suddenly feels unsettled. For years, cosmologists believed those primordial formations emerged slowly within the universe's first few hundred million years. But Webb's observations have forced researchers to question nearly every step of that narrative. According to the prevailing view, the first young galaxies shouldn't have matured until one or two billion years after the Big Bang, small, scrappy dwarf systems that collided and merged their way into larger bodies like the Milky Way. And during the so-called cosmic dark ages, we imagine the universe smothered in a haze of neutral hydrogen that kept the light of early stars locked away. The standard model claimed that this murky veil didn't clear until roughly a billion years post Big Bang, when that hydrogen finally became ionized and allowed light to break free. Only after this shift, we thought, could stars gather into the galaxies that would slowly sculpt the universe into its current form. Nearly every simulation agreed. Then Webb switched on, and everything began to unravel. Almost overnight, astronomers found themselves staring at thousands of shockingly luminous young galaxies, some looking suspiciously similar to our own. The emotional reaction among scientists ranged from awe to disbelief. It felt as though the universe itself had quietly rewritten its own history. For galaxies to shine that brightly, they would have needed to balloon to extraordinary sizes almost instantly. Brightness usually means mass, yet these objects appeared at an era when there simply shouldn't have been enough time for such growth. How could such giants assemble in the cosmic equivalent of a blink? And what kind of physics allows them to glow with an intensity they shouldn't even be capable of? The scientific community gave them a nickname that captured the collective frustration. Too big, too soon. Their radiance implies star counts comparable to the Milky Way, yet they formed at breakneck speed, far faster than our theories allow. Faced with this contradiction, researchers find themselves in an emotional and intellectual crossroads, confronting the possibility that some of the foundations of modern cosmology may need to be revised, rebuilt, or completely reimagined. Realizing just how tangled this mystery had become, a group of scientists turned to a supercomputer, admitting that human intuition alone couldn't untangle the universe's early fireworks. To understand why those newborn galaxies gleamed so fiercely, they built a detailed model of early cosmic evolution and let the machine simulate the wild, swirling behavior of ancient gas as it cooled, clumped, and ignited into stars stars that would eventually weave themselves into galaxies. By feeding the simulation every nuance they could, measure mass, energy flows, chemical ingredients, and the youthful universe's frantic motion, the team uncovered a compelling possibility. Instead of forming stars steadily the way galaxies do today, these early systems may have experienced long, quiet pauses, followed by explosive waves of starbirth. They called it bursty star formation, a rhythm utterly unlike the calm, predictable pace we see in the modern cosmos. This pattern, they argued, could naturally produce the overwhelming brilliance Webb has been capturing. If young galaxies repeatedly erupted with rapid-fire star creation, their luminosity would spike far beyond what the standard timeline predicts. In essence, the early universe may have had moments when it suddenly lit up cosmic surges where darkness briefly surrendered to blazing newborn stars. When Webb began collecting data in 2022, its view of deep cosmic history immediately revealed galaxies at extreme redshifts, objects shining as they were less than 400 million years after the Big Bang. 
their radiance exceeded everything the standard model anticipated. That contradiction led some astronomers to wonder whether the long-accepted picture, tiny infant galaxies slowly combining into larger ones under the pull of dark matter, had been fundamentally mistaken. But the simulations told a more reassuring story. A galaxy doesn't need to be huge to appear brilliant. If its stars flare into existence in sudden waves, the resulting flashes can mimic the glow of much larger systems. This explains why Webb is catching so many dazzling young galaxies. They aren't enormous, just temporarily supercharged. Crucially, the simulation still supports the traditional hierarchical growth model. But that doesn't mean the standard model escapes unscathed. Webb continues to expose cracks, starting with how absurdly early some galaxies form. On cosmic timescales, creating a galaxy a few hundred million years after the Big Bang is like watching a tree grow from seed to towering oak in a single afternoon. For decades, we believed galaxies couldn't exist until roughly a billion years into the universe's story. Yet Webb has proven otherwise. It has uncovered massive, well-developed galaxies sitting at the universe's edge, formed shockingly soon after the first atoms cooled. The most ancient found so far, nicknamed Macy's Galaxy, shone when the universe was only around 390 million years old. In a cosmos 13.8 billion years old, that's practically infancy. Yet there it is, fully shaped and impossibly early. And Macy's Galaxy might only be the beginning. Webb has shown us that every time we think we've found the cosmic limit, we're wrong. If this early system is just one candidate among many, further observations could reveal galaxies that appeared even closer to the universe's birth, earlier than we ever imagined possible. Then came another surprise, evidence that two enormous structures smashed into each other long before such titanic encounters were supposed to happen. Just as cosmologists were finally getting comfortable with existing timelines for early collisions, Webb delivered yet another curveball. This time, the culprit was the violent merger of two massive galaxy clusters. Their impact forged an enormous cluster known as El Gordo, and the event occurred when the universe was only halfway through its life, far earlier than the standard model allows. According to the familiar story, galaxies should form first, quietly build themselves up, and only later gather into sprawling clusters. That kind of assembly should take a very long time. Yet El Gordo stands there in cosmic history like a protest sign waving at our theories. If something that colossal came together that early, we may need to rethink the rules, whether that means fixing pieces of the current model or drafting an entirely new one. As if that weren't enough, Webb uncovered another shock, monstrous black holes lurking in the earliest galaxies. When the telescope peered at faint red specks from the dawn of time, it detected swirling storms at their cores, powerful engines scientists didn't expect to find in such abundance. The simplest interpretation is both thrilling and unsettling. Huge black holes, weighing millions of suns, were already shaping their galaxies almost from the start. These would be the ancestors of the supermassive black holes we see today, but their early appearance raises uncomfortable questions. Did they grow at unbelievable speed? Or were they born at enormous sizes from the very beginning? Webb was expected to find small, rapidly feeding black holes, not a horde of oversized ones demanding that our ideas about how stars, galaxies, and black holes evolve be rethought from scratch. And the surprises kept coming. Webb didn't just expose early galaxies with unexpected mass, it revealed that their chemistry breaks the rules too. A team using the Webb telescope peered more than 12 billion years into the past to study how galaxies enriched themselves over time. What they found was nothing like the pattern seen in younger galaxies. These ancient systems produced far fewer heavy elements than models predicted. We simply couldn't see this discrepancy before because earlier instruments weren't sensitive enough to examine galaxies from near the universe's beginning. Webb's ability to look back to just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang exposed a clear mismatch between the expected link among a galaxy's size, star formation rate, and chemical complexity. With Webb expected to operate for at least another decade, 
possibly two, its future discoveries may reshape the origin story of everything. We're on the brink of answers to questions we haven't even learned how to ask yet. So, what are your thoughts? Share your perspective, and if you enjoy exploring the universe's mysteries, make sure you follow Cosmos Prodigy for more.